appreciate the introduction. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'm really proud of our, our football team. You know, uh, going through the week, Tuesday and Wednesday practice, kind of went out there. I thought the effort was really good and just the mental intensity and was the focus there, was where we, we dialed in at. I thought we had a great Thursday and Friday. And then we came out here and we, we, get, we came out of the gates pretty good. You know, offensively, uh, really – probably by far our most complete game of making some plays when you needed to make plays, really successful and staying balanced and doing a good job in the run game. I thought Kirk caught a great game as far as some, some shots down the field. And, and Debo Samuel goes and makes some 50-50 ball plays that only a few of us can make on this earth. And so really proud of uh, you know how offensively moving the ball down the field. They got a little tackle over set that gave us some issues defensively, didn't fit some runs very well. That was disappointing. The two runs that split us in the first half. Their splits create space in your defense, and we, we, we honored it too much. We needed to stay more to the box, and that's on me as a coach. So we'll get those things corrected, and the tackle over in the second half was really the drive they had. And unfortunately, their guy missed two field goals. And, and, uh, but our guys kept fighting. They kept hanging in there. Really proud of them. You know, you're a two and four, and going in the open week and the negativity is amazing. And then, and then the guys just keep believing and having confidence in what we're doing, and that's, that's what's happened here. So. Uh, but, but our work ethic and our, our preparation, what's been key, this staff has done a fantastic job and really proud of them. But our, our young guys continue to mature, continue to get better. You know, Dennis Warham, Kier Thomas, I mean, there's a lot, there's some guys on defense too that have continued to come on. A.J. Turner is the only injury we have. We think it's a, just a knee sprain, probably day to day. And uh, so, past that, I think we're pretty healthy uh, going into our next ball game. I'll open up for any questions. Raise your hand. I've got a microphone to you, David. In the run game, specifically through the first three quarters, what were some of the struggles? Was it the blocking or maybe Rico just not seeing the holes? Real I felt well? like we weren't hitting the hole. I'm, you know, I felt like there were some things there. And, and you know, what, what you've got to be careful with, especially a young back, is always trying to make the big run. You just, you know, four yards is good. It's second and six. So we can't, we're not going to make a big run every time against the folks we're playing against. You know, we, we've got to be able to just take four yards, go second and six, and play the next down. And, and it wasn't on Rico. I'm not saying that. But there was some times I didn't feel like we hit the hole as, as crisp as we could have. Well, yeah, then I thought Rope did a good job of going to some speed sweeps and misdirections to give some eye candy to the defense, and, and we got some displacement in there. Our offensive line ran the power play extremely well in the second half and really got a lot of movement there. I really thought the one their, their player, their backside safety, made a fantastic play on the one power was about to spit out and the game was going to be over, and they wouldn't have gotten the ball back, but their, their player made a really good play. Josh? What factors – what's the difference between a quarterback who sort – will throw the ball away in trouble. Jake a couple of times just zipped it out of bounds. And a guy who won't do that, is that a coaching point? Is that an instinct uh, I think that some both. guys have? And some guys? I think both. I think that there's a, a part of that is in the pocket awareness of when the rush is closing in, when do you need to get rid of the ball. Uh, you know, and, and there's some coaching tips that we can give with that. Uh, but, you know, you know, I thought there was a couple times we probably held the ball a little long, and, and we probably could have gotten, you know, gotten away. With, they 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 played some good man coverage at times in the game, but you know, I'll take our guys in man coverage a lot. Is that something that you can tell about a guy on a practice field? Like, did you realize that Jake no, had that, or do you have to does he have to prove it on the field? Because we're not live, right? And that's where it's hard. It's hard to ever see how a guy's gonna when the rush is coming and live bullets are coming at you. You don't ever know, and and that's the predicament you get in as a coach, do we go live and risk an injury? Or do we say thud and would he have gotten out of that situation? What, you know, did he recognize that situation? Certainly reps help having live rushers come at you is good, uh, but, but you don't ever really know till game day or when it's a live situation. The 50-50 balls to Debo, is that a coaching point if it's, if it's single coverage well, we Debo, had a couple back, there? We had a couple, depending on where he is on the defender, we have a couple back shoulder situations that we hit that was well thrown and well contested on their part, and Debo made a play on him. There's someone, he's on top of the DB, we're going to lay the ball on top, which we did several times, and, and make a play. So it's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of reps involved in that. It seems to be, well, I just made a play. No, there's a lot of reps involved of where to throw the ball, where the receiver needs to play the ball, and uh, just you know, two guys making plays for us. Will, what's the, what, what's the game plan when you're in, at your own two? And you know, and, and what kind of confidence does it give your offense when it's a 98-yard drive that effectively puts you on top for good tonight? Well, that was the really probably the, the, the ceiling point of the game and the momentum of the game to, to, to make a stop and then, and then have that happen. But uh, uh, you know, I, I think as much as anything, your thought process is to get a first down. 
So if you get one first down, at least you can flip the field and they're going to be on their side of the 50. Defensively, your mindset is three and out. You get a punt, you're at midfield, one first down, you're in field goal range. So that's just the general mindset that most coaches have. Uh, we, we felt like we had a shot dialed up early. We check, checked into the run game. We were going to test them on the vertical ball. Uh, but, but when we were able to run it off your goal line, that, that's demoralizing for a defense. And they got tired late in the game. And I credit Jeff Dillman and his strength staff. And we, we, we ran the ball extremely well late in the game. Josh? Chris is targeting Kyle. Did you feel like he did something wrong there, or did he catch a bad break? No, it's a bad break. It's a, it a correct call. But it's the guy's – when a quarterback's sliding, you got to pull off. And, and he got in that situation, again, having been there before, it's, it's hard. And you're in that, you know, he wasn't, there was no malicious intent, but it was the correct call. And it's, I told Chris, I said, it's just the, it's, it's, uh, the rub of the green, as someone here used to say. Um, so uh, um, it's just, it's, it is what it is. I mean, it's hard. It's a hard play. It's just something that happens. It's bang, bang. And you kind of, you know, I, I thought that Chris Moody did a really good job in the middle field ball later in the game and, and tackling with his shoulder, lowered his, lowered his, uh, his, uh, his target. So. Again, I think that uh, those are all easy plays to dissect and talk about, but when you're in that moment, it's hard. Coach, how is Chris mentally after having to leave early the last two games? Have you gotten a chance to talk with him at all? He was good. I mean, he was happy we won. So and he'll be fine. He's a competitor. Uh, he made he lost his composure a week ago, and, and I, I told him, I said, this is a very unfortunate situation. There was no malicious intent. He wasn't trying to you know hurt anybody. The guy slid. You got to pull up in that situation, but it's again easy for you and I to talk about it. Coach, can you talk about uh, the improvement of the secondary um, from the beginning of the year until now, particularly uh, Jamarcus King? Well, we gave up some balls there tonight. That third and twenty-three was something. But uh, uh, you know, again, I think that you know Tavares Robinson does a really good job of teaching and coaching the guys. Uh, you know, we teach concepts. It's not necessarily memorization. It's just about you know, you make a call and we apply our concepts to splits and to formations and different different things we do. We change it up week to week. So we, we're not uh, constantly sitting in the same thing over and over and over again. Our cover corners are covered well outside. Jamarcus King, Chris Lamonds, and Rashad Fenton, which frees us up inside to do some different things. And when you can when you can seal the edges outside, Rashad Fenton made a fantastic play on the double move uh, when they went for the big play off the fourth down conversion. Uh, fantastic play. Jamarcus King has played good football for us all year. Ben. Just how do you grade your, your secondary's ability to sort of come through the fact that you were missing a starter pretty much the entire game and two for a short stretch there? Well, you know, uh, uh, we won the game, and that's the bottom line. I mean, late in the game, we, I told T-Rob, just make them bleed for it. We're up two scores, drop eight, and you know, expend time and fill up all the zones. We'll, we'll get there with three. And I ended, we ended up, they only had six sacks coming in the game, and we got three sacks tonight and pressured him several times. A couple times we missed him in the pocket. So that was a really good job by our front. We rushed three a bunch. Uh, in those situations, you, you're a two-score game. The worst thing you can do is give up a big play and there's time on the clock. So expend time. Make them, make them churn the clock and bleed for it. Will into the first half, it seemed like you guys were maybe going to run it out, but then you got a first down. And did you, you guys think about maybe scoring on that last possession? Well, when we but when we popped the run on the third down, we were going to go fast, and then we got the sack. Right. And uh, at that time of the game, I didn't want to go back out defensively. We had, we we needed to make an adjustment on the tackle over. We did not. We had. To, we, we were trying to clean it up on the sideline. What we were doing, and I didn't feel comfortable with it. Uh, but but had we had you know had an incomplete or gotten the ball down the field, we were going to go fast. And with that same uh, line, that there was the fourth one where you guys ended up kicking. Elliott got the for the 10-point game. Any consideration to go for it there or just no, take the points, make, make it a two-score score game? Coach, you talked about being two and four going into the open break, and then you win three in a row. Now on the verge of bowl eligibility, just talk about the transformation the guys have made the last three weeks. Well, I, I got to credit our staff and our players. You know, and if you have a, a, a group of bad eggs in that locker room, you will not survive that kind of situation. Not nowadays. And you'll have guys, you know, the, the old the, as the boat as the water gets uh, starts getting in the boat, the rats start coming to the top. We didn't have that. You know, we had a bunch of guys that continue to work. Uh, you know, we continue to go after it. Continue to, you know, try to improve. Uh, very technical in our approach as a staff with our players, and our players have responded. So, yeah. It's 100% our players, in my opinion, as far as how they've responded to hard coaching. 
confrontation, uh, you know, a lot. And I, I mean, we're not going to back off of it and just continue to do the things we're doing, continue to improve. And we're, we're by no means where we need to be. But we certainly have improved, and I think everyone can see that. And I think everybody can see the belief and the confidence the players have in the, some, some of the things we're doing. And, and we still have a long way to go. I mean, let's be realistic. Cool. Uh, what has Jake uh, been telling you about how he feels he's been playing? Um, I haven't really talked to him about that. I mean, I mean, since you know he's he's off limits, I'm just wondering if he said anything to you about how he feels about how he's played through the first three games. Well, I hadn't really asked his opinion. Um, so, but uh, no, Jake is a very grounded, humble guy. He goes and watches film. He prepares himself. He's hard on himself. He's not a guy that you really need to sit there and correct and and get on. And 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 you know, Kurt Roper does that enough. You know, I'm just a guy that tries to help our offensive staff from a scheme standpoint of some of the things I think they're going to see and what people may try and do. And, and that's what I try to provide as much as anything and, and encouragement as much as anything for Jake. And, and uh, so, uh, but, 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 but I let Kurt do the, the coaching of the quarterbacks. I mean, that's his job. That's what I've hired him to do. Are you guys adding a lot to Jake's workload week by week, or did he come in pretty much ready to handle everything y'all want to do? Um, I don't know that we would say that we're doing everything we want to do. There's not a lot we're backing off of, Josh. And I think that we are able to adjust and change week to week to give different looks that I think help us offensively. And, you know, he's got a good adaptability to be able to change and do some different things. So I wouldn't say it's a we're adding a bunch of stuff. We just we rep our base runs and, and, and pass game, and we may get it to a different look. We may get it by a different motion. I mean, there's some different things we add, and then a couple, you know, you know, wrinkles each week that we feel like can can help us. But at the end of the day, it's all about repetition, repetition of the the, the runs you have, repetition of the route concepts that you have for everybody involved, especially a young offensive football team. So if you really broke us down, it's not overly complex what's happening, but it's the repetition of it with good people, and when you mix that together, some good things can happen for you. Give up, I think, 465 yards today, but you still held an opponent under 30 points, I think, for the tenth or what, ninth time this season. How important are turnovers in that, and do you really preach that in practice? We've got to be an opportunistic defense. We have to. We're not dominant enough where we need to be right now. And going in the game, going in the year, we need to play really good on third down. We've been average on third down. We need to play really good in the red zone. We have played outstanding red zone defense, and we've gotten turnovers. So we needed to be that kind of defense right now. That's just who we are. Well, earlier this week, you talked about Rico's ability to run through contact. Does that come into play in a game like today where it seemed like he seemed to get stronger there, like in the fourth quarter where he got the bulk of his yardage? Those defensive kids get tired of hitting it at the end of the day, and it wears on you after a while. And that first one's OK, and the second one's, I, my shoulder's hurting a little bit. And that third one's like, I'm, I thought the five technique should have made that play. I was in my, I'm doing my job. That's how that works. I've coached defense my whole life. I've seen it firsthand and all the excuses that come with it. Moody obviously rejoined your team in the spring and had a big game today. What's he done to put himself in this position? He's such a Moody. What's he done to be himself? You know, how he rejoined the team in the spring. What's he done to put himself I'm in this position? I'm glad he did. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What's he done to put it, make him somebody you can rely on? Well, Chris is extremely bright. He's extremely intelligent. And he is very adaptable to different coverages and how we switch and do things. He's a good communicator. He comes out and has a very good work ethic, in my opinion, on how he's approached things. He's really sort of, conf you know, blended in with what we want to do and how we want to do things. He's kind of bought into that. I didn't know at first that he would, especially being a guy that was thinking about transferring. So we tested him early, and, and he responded very well. He had a very good summer. But, you know, I think a lot of it goes back to he's extremely bright and extremely intelligent. And he can learn a lot, and he can handle a lot, and he applies concepts extremely well. And so when you have guys like that, it, for us, for me in our scheme, it, it's easy, especially that position, because they have to actually communicate and talk at that position. And he does that very well, as well as, as DJ and Chaz and Steven. Coach, just a, a lot of young teams after a big win maybe right. mentally don't come sharp the next week. How do you feel about how your guys handle this whole week, and then does that help as you get ready to go on the road? Well, we, had, we, we I was concerned after Tuesday's practice. We had, you know, we haven't been a team that's jumped off sides a bunch and lined up all sides. We had some, in my opinion, focus issues. I put my mouse traps all over the building to to let them know don't take the cheese. Everybody's patting you on the back and telling you how good you are, but understand 
you know, this football team coming in here is certainly capable. Their last SEC game winning was against us. So we need to understand that and don't don't take the cheese. You know, you got to understand that in life. It, it, things are never as good as they seem, and they're never as bad as they seem. They're somewhere in between. And just continue to understand that. And the same folks that are patting you on the back after a big win will be the ones stabbing you after a loss. That's kind of the way it works in this deal. So understand that. Uh, now that you have these first nine out of the way, what does this coming Saturday's game mean for you personally? I'm going to enjoy tonight <laughs> with my wife, Carol. Well, you guys have talked about bowl games being a goal, but it's still mathematically possible for you guys to win the East. Will you talk about that to the team after tonight? No, I'm not very good at math, so I, <laughs> I, don't, get into, I don't get into all that. I just, we need to worry about our next ball game. We're going to enjoy it tonight, and then we're going we're gonna to start working on the Gators tomorrow. Coach, what has impressed you with, with three games under his belt about Jake? What, what, what stands out to you? Well, I don't know. I, I felt, you know, obviously I've known Jake pretty good from last year and uh, a guy that I've gotten to know in the recruiting process even better. Uh, he's very level-headed. Uh, he's very hard on himself. He's a very humble young man. Um, so I think any time a guy performs the way he's performed, it, it, I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't surprise me, but, uh, but it's, it's something that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think the moment is too big. And I think he handles the moment very well. I think he's, again, he's very humble. He's appreciative of his teammates. He understands that Debo Samuel and Brian Edwards and that offensive line and Rico Dowdle and Hayden Hurst and Casey Crosby. I mean, he doesn't, he's not a guy that's going to look in the mirror and think it's about him. He's going to understand it's about our team and the fact that uh, he's got some guys around him that have played well and done a good job for him. Coach, after the Georgia game, you said here that you noticed how hard the players were working. You just wanted the results to be there. Now that the results are coming, have you noticed a change in the players, the way that they're reacting, or has it all been the same? And how proud are you of this effort? Well, I think, you know, there it's a lot happier locker room. And that's – that's you work too hard. The fun's in winning. I tell the guys all the time. And, and you got you got to experience that. And our guys work extremely hard. And uh, we, you know, we're going we're gonna to get after it again Tuesday morning. I can't wait. So it's going to be fun. And our guys will respond to it. They understand what's expected. They understand the work ethic it takes. And they continue to buy into what, what's going on. And that's just part of it. But, I, but you, get, you have to experience that as a player. you got to feel that. As coaches, we're, it's kind of Groundhog Day for us. We just, we just go back to the next thing. And uh, for them to see the – and then it also you're able to coach hard. You know, the guys have some belief and confidence in what you're doing. They know when you tell them something, it's not, I wonder if this is right. It's, you know what, we, we, we're winning games and good things are happening for us. We're being productive. I'm being a better player, so I ought to do what this guy's asking me to do. So some of that has to happen too. Rico showed what he could do on the ground, but he also had a couple of receptions, that touchdown grab too. Is that the next step in his game is to show what he can do in like the short yardage? No, we felt like that he's got really good hands. We've always felt that way. That's we're very comfortable throwing it to him, AJ and David for that matter. So, uh, you know, again, just, you know, I just think turns and reps and he's done a nice job in protection for the most part. So, you know, he's just, it's, you know, he just continues to improve and get better. Had a good attitude about it too. Coach, almost all the offense comes from uh, underclassmen tonight. How confident are you in the future of this team? Well, we're just, you know, we're just worried about next week. I mean, we got, we got it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've, I've sold, told everybody the future is extremely bright here, and really excited about that, and and uh, and certainly, uh, you know, pleased with how our guys have continued to fight and battle and scratch and do all the things you do as a, as a good team does, and they, and we've we've formed ourselves into a pretty good football team because of that, because we play. Well together, defensively, we've got to be opportunistic. And offensively, we're getting more and more explosive with some of the guys around them. Uh, you know, we still need to get some things shored up in special teams as far as our coverage units were a little better. You know, Chris goes out tonight in the punt return game. We lose 15 yards in field position every time they punt. So we got to we got to get that shored up. Yeah. Uh, was there something that you saw in their defense that, that kind of made you think it would open up the way it did when you guys ran ran power off that jet sweep? Well, they no, that was something the curtain and they discussed at halftime and, and certainly because of the success we've had with Debo and one of the touchdowns uh, that he scored with and you know anytime you give you know window dressing, eye candy, whatever you want to call it to a defense with a successful player, it's going to draw some people and it drew, drew three guys moved when he moved and, and our offensive line blocked it extremely well. Last one goes to John. Did Malik go out injured? 
school. Yeah, but he's, he's going to be fine. Yeah, he, uh, his lower body, he, but he, we think he's going to be fine. DJ came in and did a nice job. DJ was limping a little bit, but all those guys are fine. There will be no issues for next week. It also seemed like the offensive line got progressively better as the game went on, and it seems like that's happened the last last few games. Would, would that be accurate? Well, I think a little bit of a it's, – it's a, it's a test of time a little bit with us because we're, we're, we're primarily an inside zone team, and you bang it and you bang it, and it may not look as good as you want in the first quarter. But over a period of time, you know, you know Mason Zandy and Zach Bailey and, and Alan Knott and, and Corey Helms and, and, uh, and Malik Young, and they keep leaning on you. It's 300 pounds leaning on you every single snap. So eventually within the, the test of time there, we, we get some movement, and we got a good back running behind them. And, uh, and and create some 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 things, but I, I, again, I credit Jeff Dillman and, and, the, and their staff. Our guys were fresh at the end, playing uh, you know playing very well in the line of scrimmage. All right, we'll let Coach go. Keep All right, thanks.